Hi friends, this is Caitlin. I am so excited to be back with you for Pink and Mean. Um, we are gonna have some fun tonight. We had a request last week for um, to show how we can use the Pink and Mean Glossy Gel that comes like this to foil. And I decided instead of just showing that one thing that I would do a run through for anybody who might be new to foiling, to show you six different ways that we can use our mini mink foiling machine slash laminator. I do recommend the mink. I have used a laminator in the past with mixed results where my mink gives me very consistent results. So you do what you need to do, but I fully endorse the mink. Um, so for some of them, we don't actually have to use the mink. We could just use pressure, um, but we're gonna talk through foiling on our pattern toner sheets, our full panel toner sheets. We're gonna take a look at the new cut-ups again because they're beautiful. We're gonna talk about stickies and possibly die cutting those as well. We're going to talk about glossy gel with a, I think I wrote it as like a guest appearance <laughs> by our quickie glue pen because you can use both of those. And I'm also going to share um, how you can use adhesive sheets and shape dies to make fun foiled die cut elements as well. So we have a lot to cover. Um, I do see so many friends in the comments. Let's do a quick run through of highs and hellos, and then we will get jump over and give everybody else a couple more minutes to join us. Um, so I see Lori from Wisconsin, Annette's checking in from Montreal, my mom in New Jersey. Um, Virginia's here and she's from Virginia. That's an easy one for me to remember. Um, Judith's checking in from South Carolina. Um, Annette's here. Oh, we said Annette, Annette's from Montreal. I wish they would like link up your names better on here. Um, Judith's checking in from South Carolina. I probably already said that too. I'm a mess guys. Connie's here. Um, Melissa's checking in from Nova Scotia. Hopefully your snow is all done up there from when we talked last week. Um, Melissa is the reason we're playing with our glossy gel tonight, by the way. Um, Susan's here. Maria's here. Lessa's checking in from Oregon. That's fun. Cindy from California. Karen's checking in. Barbara. Beverly from New Hampshire. Mary from New Jersey. Deanne's here. Pam's here. Man, we this is a big, a very grateful for this list. Leslie's um, checking in from British Columbia, Irma from California, Mommy, uh, oh, even Michelle's here. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, Lala's checking in from the Philippines, uh, Jensette from, I know we've gone over this before, MN. I'm going to guess Minnesota, but I'm probably wrong. It's either Minnesota or Maine. I think we said ME was Maine, so I'm going to stick with Minnesota. Um, J Jody's here. Miss Judy B is here. Jeff is here from San Diego. I think that's everybody. Anybody who comes in late, I'm just going to apologize to you now when you watch the replay because that was that's a hefty list. Jen said, said I am right. It is Minnesota. Good. At least I got that going for me tonight. All right. Let's go ahead and switch over. So. We are going to plug our mini mink in. One of my favorite things about it is how fast it heats up. So I usually try to not plug it in and get it started before we start talking so you guys can see it in real time. So we're gonna set to three. Later on, we'll probably lower the heat a little bit because we don't we won't need it to be super strong later when we're looking more for pressure than heat. Um, I do have my transfer sheet, my carrier sheet here. So we're going to want to make sure that we're using that. Oh, Miss Jeff is Missy. Missy's using Jeff's account. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about are these foilable panels, right? So uh, Michelle has 
curated for us. Let me grab the opposite. Most of our foilable sheets tend to look like this. So you can get these ones. Everything that is white space is going to stay white space for these. And that's true for both of these. So you can see some are going to give you more delicate and specific foil placement. And some are going to give you much bolder foil where the white is the detail. So there's not a right or a wrong. It just depends on what you're going for, what look you're going for, and how much you want your foil to stand out versus being like a delicate shimmer. Uh, <laughs> Deanne says she's taking notes. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna take our time and go through these, but it is going to be a lot. That's why I listed out all of the six things we're going to look at tonight in the description for you because it is it can feel like a lot but i promise we're gonna it's gonna be okay so um we're gonna play with the more toner one and the way that this works is the black ink on here is toner and so when combined with heat and pressure this specific foil that our cheer foils are made out of it sticks to that toner. So then when we lift it up, we have the, the white space is what's left. The white space doesn't grab onto the foil and that will be left on our sheet here. And we're gonna then show how to use the negatives on a full toner sheet. But we'll get to that in a second. I'm trying to break this down so that it's as easy as possible for you guys. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just run through a regular pattern paper panel, pattern toner sheet panel. So I'm going to trim my foil down, but it's just slightly bigger because even this little piece we can use for sentiments later on. We can use for all kinds of things. So we're going to save that. Um, I have my pink and main microfiber, but as you can see, it's seen better days. It really needs to go through the wash. So I am going to substitute cleaning this off with another microfiber, but just know if I could, I would use my pink and main one. So we're going to dust off our toner panel, okay? And we're going to, hold on guys, I'm so sorry. It was like 80 degrees here today. And so all of the trees of pollen woke up. And so now my allergies have also woken up. Love that for me. Um, create by hand says so she's unpacking her pink mink. I love that. All right, so we're gonna use that same microfiber to dust off the wrong side, right? The back side of our foil. And we're going to place our foilable pretty side up and our foil pretty side up. And we're going to tuck all of that into our carrier sheet. And then I like to just flip it over, make sure that I have a good like border all the way around but we're still both pretty sides facing up and we're going to gently place that in. As soon as the minx picks it up and starts to pull it through, we're gonna let go and let it go at its own pace. Let's see. This is like my go time to check all the comments, right? Um, perfect. All right, the biggest trick that we have learned through our almost a year now of playing with the mink on our lives is that we have to 100% fully let these cool down. If there's any heat left to this, it when you peel it up, it will not peel cleanly. So we're gonna let that fully cool while we talk about and take a look at our full toner sheets, panels. So this is the ombre set, the number one ombre set. And so instead of using black toner to make a pattern, these sheets are colored toner, but the full sheet is printed on. So 
if we took a whole piece of foil and put it on top of this and peeled it up, the whole thing would be the foil. You wouldn't see any of that ombre. But that's not how we're going to use it. While this is still cooling, I can show you I have one from here when we did this for Easter. Once we peel, right, we get that negative, that negative image like this. So if we take that and put it over, when we peel it up, this is going to be clear and our foil will stick and all of the places that for us are clear now will have purple. So it's just a fun way to make sure you can use up all of your scraps. I think I want to play with the blue. That blue ombre has just been calling out to me and I really wanted to see how it paired with the silver. So what I'm going to do, this is definitely cooled now. So we're going to have our hopefully very um, satisfying peel. It's looking pretty good. Lovely. So we have our beautiful holographic silver with the white dots on this one, right? That was our full, our pattern toner. And then now you can see what I have left is clear with those dots left in place. So what we're going to do with this one is take our, you know what, just to be safe, we're going to repeat the dusting process, right? Let's just make sure that any dust or little hairs are taken off of your toner and your foil because that dust, if it gets in between your toner and your foil, it'll stop it from transferring. So we're going to place this same thing as before, pretty side up for both. Hold our sandwich and we're going to pass that through our mink one more time. Oh no, yeah, Susan, you got to break that pink mink out. You can't just leave her in the box. She's going to be so sad. All right. So once this goes through, this is kind of the like typical way, right? That we see we use our foils the most often this way. We've done this many times live together. Um, this is kind of the, the standard. That's how I think of it when it comes to foil. So while that cools, I'm just gonna trim down some foil for the next, the next thing that I'm gonna show you guys. I have this really pretty purple foil. Thought this would be a fun way to kind of show you guys multiple styles of foil too, like the solid colors, the holographic. Um, all right, so this feels really cool. So we can peel this guy up now. And you can see this center section is completely cleaned of foil. We've used all that foil. And now we have this beautiful ombre with that polka dot left that rainbow polka dot so right so these are mirror of each other and you can i think it's fun you can layer them if you want but to me this looks more like a party and this almost looks like christmas like a winter scene this would be so fun with um little snowmen or snowflakes so that is our first way to use that right our first one and two using the pattern toner sheet and then using a full toner sheet with the negative foil image to use up that whole piece of foil. So something that is new to us, to Pink and Main in this last um, month are these cut ups. So we did play with these once before, but I am far from done with them. This is, a whole birthday sentiment set. Um, and they're all pre die cut. And these are printed with toner. So the same way that our pattern 
held um, that foil, our sentiments now are going to hold that foil. And I think, let's see, I cut I like a longer. Maybe we can do like two. Let's do like birthday princess. Oh, that's really pretty. That's like very delicate and happy birthday, but in like a really pretty calligraphy. So you can do these any color, obviously. Okay, and I already trimmed these down. So what I'm gonna do, you know, let's just do it this way. I'm gonna set these again, pretty side up and then put my foil pretty side up. And I'm gonna like pinch these so that when I flip them, I can make sure nothing's overlapping. You do that however feels right, I don't know. Sharon said she received hers today. She can't wait to play with them, I love that. Um, Karen said she needs the cut-ups in every saying. So Michelle, take note of that. Um, we want more cut-ups, we love them. We're all about it. Um, Donna too. Donna loves the cut-ups too. I'm telling you, that's it just makes it so easy to just already have some sentiments ready to go. Some of them are those fun shapes and icons too. So I love that. And now the the kind of sister product in my mind to that's what I want to the um cut-ups the one that the thing the fun thing that came right before the cut-ups are the stickies and so these some of our stickies come with dies and some don't so if you want to skip that process altogether of needing any kind of die then we can focus Maybe, what is happening? There we go. So you can see that beautiful high shine, happy birthday, and our really fun little birthday princess. There she is, super shiny purple. So those can just get popped right onto a card and they'd be ready to go, okay? We also have the negatives here. So if you wanted to pop one of these onto a full toner sheet, you could totally do that too. Um, so these are the stickies, right? And so the ones that I picked to play with don't specifically have a die in the set, but we have circle dies, right? So we can do that ourselves. We need cut-ups for all the holidays and in every greeting. I agree. I agree. So the way that the stickies work, I'm not going to die cut the sticky sheet. That would be too much to start. I would, I would prefer to foil them and then die cut them if that's what I want to do. So these kind of work, I want you to think of them as like temporary tattoos. Right, that's the application method that we're going to kind of go with. So I have a piece of foil here. It's not quite big enough for two. Right, so we'll just cut out one. So I'm going to go with thinking of you. And we're going to just trim out. Just like a temporary tattoo. Or like a rub on decal, right? That's basically what these are. So we have this, and the way these come is it's two sheets. How can I get this so you can actually see it? It's two sheets of plastic with adhesive in the middle. There you go, you can kind of see. Two sheets of plastic. So you can, when you're peeling this up, the side that has 
the black ink on it when you peel, that's where the adhesive is, okay? So you're gonna really gently peel that off. The backing is done. That's just, that can go in the trash. It's just acetate, okay? You're gonna pick wherever on your card or your card stock or whatever you're working on, you're gonna put it there, right? So if I wanted it centered and I was gonna decorate around, I could put it centered, I'm gonna die cut it. So I'm gonna just put it in the corner, but with enough room that I can die cut around it. Sorry, my brain literally just froze. And you don't have to do this on um, heat. And in theory, you can press it. We've tried that and it was good, but it wasn't great. So when in our experimenting a month or two ago, we realized that the heat doesn't hurt that. So we're just gonna go for it. The heat doesn't hurt the adhesive at all. Um, Virginia said, what size are the circles? So these circles are just under two inches across. Yeah, I can't, it's like one of the tiny lines less than two inches across. Okay, so we're gonna pull this guy out. And we are going to, again, gently pull that black ink part off. And let's see if I can, you can kind, there you go. You can see it in the reflection, right? That adhesive is on, there it goes. Now it wants to be in focus. That thinking of you is stickied right onto our cardstock. So now what we're gonna do is take our foil, always pretty sides up, right? That's the same no matter what process we're using. This whole thing tonight, the pretty side of our foil and our image are always gonna be up. Yes, and Virginia, 100%. You can put this whole sheet onto one piece of cardstock. You can cut them up if you want more room. You can put the whole sheet, this whole thing, right on a six by six paper will fit through your mink. And then you can cut out little squares or strips of foil if you want and do multiple colors. You could just do one solid sheet of foil on top. You could die cut them all at once. You could save them. While that cools down, let me grab one of the ones that has the coordinating dies because I think that there are a lot of people who would appreciate that. Where are the parts? So Michelle also has some, like our, our little Valentine's hearts that we used in, back in January and February. And these come with the shapes that coordinate so that when you're done foiling, it fits right in there. You can die cut that shape right out. But for these circles, you don't have to, you don't need that because if you have a circle set, you can just die cut them with that. So there we have our thinking of you. There we go with the shine, right? Thinking of you, beautiful. And I'm not really not gonna. Um, so Teresa, you the sticky part, once you've used them, the sticky part is gone. Um, we have talked about that you could use the clears um, with like a shaker panel maybe, right? The, the part that you peel off that has the print on it you can get creative with how you want to use that or layer it onto cardstock, kind of almost like it was vellum. But yeah, so you can see like a regular circle die will fit right around that. We can die cut that and have a circle die cut the same as we have our little letters die cut, right? So that's another way you can use these. 
with our stickies. Oh, here it is. I knew I had it. So yeah, this now has no stick, but it is still a beautiful thing. And you can also just die cut that, right? And have like a little clear ephemera piece. I don't know. I say go for it. And if you figure out a way that you to use it that you love, let me know. All right, so those are our stickies. I'm getting like a nice little pile over here. What's the next one? The next one we're going to talk about is, do you guys want to see glossy gel next, or do we want to see adhesive sheets next? While I'm straightening up. Leave me a comment. Are we doing glossy gel stencils, or are we doing adhesive sheets and die cuts? Hopefully I can open my glossy gel. Keep it sealed so tight that sometimes my husband has to help me. I see one for glossy and one for adhesive. I need more votes. Let me show you a little sneak of both, maybe. Glossy, Karen said glossy. <laughs> Teresa said, oh God. <laughs> That's the kind of day it's been, guys. My lights are trying to take me out. Glossy, 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 glossy. Okay, everybody loves glossy gel. That's the, the request that started this whole thing, right? Melissa was asking for some glossy gel. So I am going to put this to the side. I'm going to drop this down to like a one because I don't need it so hot. So while that cools back down, we are going to take just a piece of our ice rink cardstock. And I have the Hearts of Plenty stencil here. And because this is just for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to tape it. But in real life, I would tape it from behind with some washi or I would use some magnets. See, and I went and jinxed myself. Okay. Oh, we're still going to do adhesive sheets, Susan. Don't worry. It was just a vote of which one was going to be first. All right. So our glossy gel comes like this. And I'm going to go in with a little spatula. And my heart's a plenty. And we want to just go through our stencil with a nice, smooth, even layer. And you're going to let this dry. I prefer to let it dry at least an hour. I'm pretty sure I've seen um, other people say like a half hour. But if you have an hour to let it sit, I think an hour is good. And it kind of goes clear as it dries. So you're gonna peel that up. You get that really nice 3D design. You're gonna set that aside to dry. You're going to immediately wet or wash your stencil, which I'm gonna do in my kitchen the fastest ever, because if your glossy gel dries, it's gonna be real hard to take off of that stencil. So, through the magic of internet, I have a Hearts of Plenty panel that I did when I got home from work today, ready to go. So you can see it, like I said, it dries clear, right? And because uh, I wanted this to be as fun and scientific as possible, I also took the Betty's Butterfly stencils. And I did one of those onto black hard stuff. So we're going to see what that does because oh, I think that's going to be really good. Oh, I see Dawn's checking in. Um, Lynn's checking in from Arizona. I love it. We have a really good crowd tonight, guys. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, so 
with these, let's see, what did I grab? I pulled some foils to try to use for these. So I think for the Hearts of Plenty, we're going to go with this really beautiful, it's like a soft champagne gold with a holographic glitter. This one we'll just trim with these teeny tiny scissors because per usual, someone has taken the scissors off my craft desk. Would it even be me if they hadn't? That's the question. Would it be alive with Caitlin if something wasn't missing? Probably not. All right, so you guys know the drill at this point. What did I do with my carrier sheet? That's how you really know it's alive with Caitlin. When my carrier sheet goes missing. I can't mix this up, guys. Okay. It's here. I knew it was here. The so same deal as each time before this. We're going to put our hearts side up, our foil pretty side up. Make sure everything's covered. And this is in our, interesting that she has not turned green. I think I'm fine. I think she's just taking a while to cool down. So we're gonna go ahead and let that slide through. I'm blurry. Now it's fixed. Okay. I don't know what that was about. I'm sorry if it went out of focus. Karen says put it on a two. Mm. Well, we're going to find out if one works. All right. Well, I'm glad I'm on blurry now. So we're going to let that cool completely just like we have been. And we're also gonna run our butterfly through. Maybe we'll do an experiment. Let's put that one up to two. Look, it's already saying it's added two. And for the butterfly, I grabbed the silver tinsel foil because it's just beautiful. And I thought that it would show up. Um, why am I using two? I didn't think I needed it all the way up to the three because it doesn't need to react with the toner. The adhesive of the glossy gel does most of the work for us, but it could be, we've done it at a one and it worked fine. We did it at a zero and it was okay, but a little heat did a little better for us. So we're gonna run that through. Sherry, I'm so glad that these videos are helping. Yeah, Sharon, I have just found, I am I get nervous that if it's too hot, it can like melt the adhesive or something. I don't know if that's really true. Our um, stickies worked fine, but I just like to err on the side of caution for that. So I put it to a one or a two instead but a little heat definitely got us a better result than no heat. So we're gonna set the butterfly to the side and we're gonna peel our hearts. I mean, come on. And these are cool because they have a texture to them. They have, like they're actually 3D, right? Because we went in with that glossy gel my camera is having a hard time focusing, but it's just because it's so glittery. Um, so these have like a little bump to them. They feel embossed almost, but the back is still flat. So it's just a really fun way, again, to add a little texture and literal texture to it too. And then you get double now out of your stencils. 
and we were able to do it. If you already own a stencil and you at this moment don't feel like getting one of these foilables or maybe the pattern you want isn't available in a foilable yet, but you have a stencil that you love, now you know how you can use your stencil to foil. Love it. So that is that. But what I really want to see is this butterfly because I have very high hopes for her. Um, Karen, it's like the texture piece. I'm assuming you're talking about um, like Tim Holtz texture pastes. I don't have a glossy texture paste from him. I have like the matte, probably because I have the glossy gel. Um, I'd say they probably are similar. I just love how easy the pink and mean one is to work with. Um, and I love the touch of gloss, which is like its um, little companion friend, but in a squeeze bottle so that you can add. It's like a little bit of a thinner version, but it has the same kind of idea. Um, so I'm not sure like apples to apples how they compare, but I'm sure they are at least somewhat similar. That just makes me so happy. Look at that butterfly. And again, it's it's like popped up on the cardstock. We did have one little spot here where it didn't quite, oh, look, it's not. So that one little spot, it didn't really even overfoil. It's just that it didn't pull that foil away. So I'm going in with an adhesive eraser because I don't really need a sand eraser. There we go. But now we have all of those little tiny detail lines. They all took. Oh, I just love that so much. Um, so yeah, I mean, this and a sentiment and a little, you know, matting it with another paper underneath. And I feel like that is a stunning card right there. So it doesn't just have to be pattern stencils. It can be, you know, whatever shape makes you happy. And then the last thing that I want to show you guys are the adhesive sheets. Because the reason that the gloss, oh no, sorry, there was one other tiny little thing I want to show you. Where did you go? So word on the street, I haven't tried this. So if it doesn't work, it's not my fault. Word on the street is, because like I was going to say, the cool thing about the, um, the cool thing about the glossy gel is it's basically acting like glue. And so in theory, using adhesive sheets or using a quickie glue pen is the same thing. So I earlier went in on a piece of black cardstock with my quickie pen and I wrote my name in cursive. And so what I'm gonna do is run this through and see if that also boils the same way because I'm pretty sure it's going to. Um, what's the name of the foil I used for the butterfly? It's the silver tinsel. All of the ones that Pink Amin has that have that like stripe, that rainbow stripe through it, are the tinsels. Um, the butterfly took my breath away. Thank you. Does it also work through a dye machine to foil? So I'm pretty sure it doesn't because it's not just the pressure. It will probably transfer, but it from what I've seen, um, it, it it hasn't given me the, the cleanest transfer without the heat. So we tried it on a zero on here and we tried it um, burnishing it with a bone folder, like rub, going over the whole thing. And it didn't transfer the same. It wasn't clean. Like I, I would be concerned that I wouldn't get all of those fine lines in that butterfly if it had no heat. So you probably can, and for something more like the hearts, right? That would probably work. 
to do it through your dye machine and just have the pressure and run it through. But for something more delicate, uh, I would definitely suggest some kind of heat. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to go with user error because I did this really quick. <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, so that's fun too, that you can add your own little bonus elements by writing with a little glue pen and it will boil. Boy, oh, I love that. Uh, let's see, Annette said, the same way as the quickie glue pen, you can use a Sakura glaze gel pen and it'll do the same thing. I love that. That makes sense. Those glaze ones have that like more 3D kind of glossy feel. Jen said, so what color toner sheet should I use for a reverse image when using the rainbow foil to get the best look? I think it all depends on how bright you want your, um, or I guess not bright, how like stark maybe is the term you want your design to be. Um, we do have black, full black toner sheet. So if you want like the the image, the relief that you're putting through to be black through your rainbow, you can do that. That would be really easy to work. Um, Lessa, I don't think regular plain gel pens would work, but Annette said that the glaze gel pens definitely work. So I think they have to have that extra little bit of thickness to them, that little bit of like tackiness that will stay on the surface. So I am now taking a six by six adhesive sheet and trimming it down a little bit. How can you do multiple colors on the birthday cake birthday sentiment? Uh, that's a great question, Mary. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at it, but we can definitely look at that in a live very soon. We can break that out and have some fun with that. I would say cutting your, my first gut answer is to tell you to cut your foils into smaller strips, right? Are we talking about the foil cake, the stickies? Because that's what I think I would do. All right, so I removed the one of the sides of my adhesive sheet and I placed my moss cardstock on top, and we're just going to press it down to make sure it's fully adhered. Um, Carmen, the, the paste that we used for our butterfly and our hearts is the glossy gel. And everything is listed in the description for you guys with links. Um, I didn't list every single foil because I wasn't positive exactly what foils I was going to be using until I sat down to get ready. Um, but all of everything else is listed for you guys. So we're going to go in with the party hat dies. And I like this because it doesn't matter like what it's not directional right? Like versus a word, we'd have to be real careful about making sure we were die cutting from a certain side. But this is um, a little more open. So I'm going to take this and run it through my die cutting machine. I'm going um, the sticky side up, basically, right? The side that has the backing paper still on it. And I am going to run this through and then kind of reverse run it, you know, so it's gonna kind of get three passes through my machine because with the adhesive sheet, it is thicker. And so these are all going to pop out all of these little holes. like that. 
And so in my vision, right, I also grabbed the green foil that has all the little stars. And we just need a little piece of that. We're gonna do some green tone on tone. We are going to, this one is the one that probably needs the least amount of heat. We're gonna peel up this, the backing paper. So we have the full sticky side. And because we're not gonna be able to shift it once it's down, I'm gonna come from the back. This is like the only time. So now pretty sides are both facing down, right? So we're gonna push that down. Kind of looks like cheese. We're gonna put it in here. And again, like I said, this is probably one that really doesn't need any heat. You could probably put this through your die cut machine just with regular plates or put this through on a zero and uh, it would be fine. Um, yeah, so Mary, if you want the, the relief part to be all different colors, I think Karen has the right idea with using an ombre um, foil or a toner sheet. Both of those would give you kind of that look of having multiple different colors on different sections. Leslie said this looks great for pizza and I've never thought of that, but now that's all I wanna do with it is make it into a pizza. All right, so we are going to take this guy, peel it off. So you can see our adhesive sheet took all of that foil. We have a beautiful, absolutely solid piece here. And because we're just working on regular cardstock, we can take these guys. and just place it onto our other cardstock. These are trickier, right? Because the back is now like all gunked up from my die cutting plates. And if we peel off the front, they're gonna, they're gonna be sticky, right? So like you could foil those as well, and that would be great. Or we can, just trim this out and let it be a green pizza slash party hat. Obviously you could do this with scissors too. But I'm gonna take the easy route because I just have those tiny little goofy scissors. But this is just another fun way that you can use some standalone dies that you already have in your stash to play with your foils and add a fun foiled element to your card. And the first time I actually ever used the party hat dies, I made a shaped card with it and that was really fun. So I can totally see making a shaped card with that party hat and then adding a foil layer on top to get that effect. So I just think this is so much fun. Um, so we'll do a quick little run through recap of all of our techniques. We're gonna unplug our me. So we did our transfer sheet and die cut to get this full kind of full foil shape. We did some glossy gel stenciling and then added our foil on top of that. Those are glossy gel. Let's move these out of the way. Or quickie blue pen. We did our sticky transfers those guys. 
we did our cut ups pre pre cut pre die cut um, toner sentiments and sh shapes and then we did our reverse image and our main uh, toner pattern right one two three four five six yep so those are our six different methods and i'm sure there are more i'm sure i didn't think of some but i really just wanted to walk us through all of these um <laughs> between pizza and lori saying it looks like a cheese head this dye is like my new favorite thing um so yeah i am so grateful to you guys for hanging out this was a, definitely a longer one for us but i appreciate you being here um if you ever have more questions, like I said, this whole video came because Melissa asked the question of if I could show the glossy gel with a foil again, and I would love to. I want to play with whatever you guys wanna see. I'm here to experiment so that you don't have to. I'm here to make things a little less scary for you um, or less intimidating, less overwhelming. That's my goal is to get you inspired and comfortable so you can start crafting with all of your supplies. I don't want your mink sitting in a box anymore. I want you to be excited to break them out and play with them. So you guys can always leave me a comment even after even our replay crew. You can leave me comments uh, making your requests for topic. I know we also had a request for sympathy cards coming up, so I'm going to work on that. We're going to break out that happy birthday cake situation and we're going to play with that either this Thursday or next week. Um, I have a list going. I always go back to check the comments from the last couple of weeks. So please let me know what you want to see. And yeah, I hope everybody's feeling inspired to play with some foil, add some shine to their cards. And um, yeah, I hope that you guys have a great day tomorrow. I will be back here on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, as always. And then do you guys know that next week starts sneak peeks? Isn't that crazy? And there's some good sneak peeks. So you're definitely going to want to hang out with us next week for some sneak peeks. Check back in here on Thursday to see if we're doing sympathy cards or something else from a request. We might change it up. Who knows? um so yeah one more time thank you guys so much i will see you soon and until next time